Yeah, I think it will adversely, if it passes, adversely impact our quality of life. Mm -hmm. The, um, you know, even the estimating conference shows that um, from 450 plus users to 1.6 qualifying patients, 1.6 million qualifying patients, they estimate that, that there will be over 1,700 uh, pot shops or treatment centers throughout the state, and we believe that it's a de facto legalization. The amendment is not a piece of, of legislation, but rather amends Article 10, Section 29 of our Florida Constitution. Uh, qualifying patient, there's no age requirement listed on, as a qualifying patient. They're free from civil and criminal liability, as is the physician in the amendment. Uh, is free from civil liability and criminal liability. And then even the treatment centers, including its employees, are held harmless in this amendment. The other misleading uh, issue concerning this is that a physician will not write a script, cannot write a script, but rather recommend this treatment not just for the debilitating diseases listed in the amendment, but all other conditions. And, and we feel that that uh, uh, is just a terrible process. Well, uh, you know, I've searched for reports where there's medical science to support the notion that uh, smokable marijuana is, is medicine. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't been able to find any. I'm sure you're aware of the American Medical Association, even the Florida Medical Association, have not come out in support of uh, um, smokable marijuana for medicinal purposes. So uh, when you get right down to it, uh, it does not seem that that's really the, the intent of those who support uh, the passing of medical marijuana. Well, medical marijuana has been around for 20 years and there aren't any real empirical studies that show that the legalization of medical marijuana leads to an increase or spike in crime. Uh, what empirical data are you guys basing your opposition? Well, well actually, I'm not, I'm not, it's just not in the increase of crime for me. It's the overall quality of life. The, the Northwestern study that was released last quarter of last year, mm -hmm. a three-year use of marijuana adversely impacts uh, uh, the uh, brain permanently. You know, um, illegal drugs are not dangerous because they're illegal. They're uh, illegal because they're dangerous. A lot of your time these last few years has been taken up in dealing with, with um, illegal uh, trafficking and, and legal pain medication, you know, oxycodone, things like that. Um, some really serious, dangerous stuff that is legal right now. Um, I mean, next to that, doesn't, doesn't marijuana look like something that's more benign and, and less likely to be, uh, to cause the kind of um, criminal consequences that we already have from some of these legal pain medication? Yeah, it's a pretty good illustration how uh, even physicians, licensed physicians, can uh, abuse uh, state and federal law. Mm -hmm. um, even an approved FDA drug can be abused. Um, but to have a drug available, so-called drug available, to the population based on the popular vote and changing and altering uh, or amending our Constitution, uh, I, I don't think it's the, it's the right process.